My next example is, and this is the one where I was specifically referring to when I said I don't do this in the real world, but we decided to try it out, is awk. Did you know you can replace text with awk? Awk is an actual scripting language. Most people just use it for inline translation or picking a column out of a string of text. Because the way awk works is it'll take a line of text that it's parsing and it'll chop it up based on a field separator that you've given it. So it'll take line by line and column by column, right? So if you had a CSV file, for example, you could chop it up based on the commas and then you'd have columns, individual items in an array that you can deal with awk. But you can do replacements with awk. And we're gonna show you the file I'm using here. This one's just colors instead of numbers. And I they're not just a repeating pattern like it was for the numbers. Uh, because I have a couple examples I'm going to try to use here. Now, the other thing I couldn't figure out, I don't know if I just couldn't figure it out or if you can't do this with awk, but I couldn't do in-place file edits. I could only do, like, it'll take the file and change it on the screen. But I think the only way to write it back out, unless there's something I missed, is to just redirect the output back into the file. Awk is often supplemented with said. Do an awk thing and then send it to said who actually does the editing. Right, right. So that's what I was guessing from what I had figured out. All right, so this first example, what it's gonna do is actually kind of neat that it'll do this in lines. This one line command is going to replace just one line in a text file, right? So what this is, I'm defining the line to, to work with, that's line number four. Then it's going to replace the whole line with the word replaced. Right, so line number four should be this last one, purple, red, green. If we run this, there you go. Now the last line is replaced, but it didn't touch the other lines. And of course, if I just change that NR to like two, it'll replace the second line, right? Which is really handy. But again, the file wasn't changed. It just changed what was, what was on the screen. So I could imagine a case where you're trying to parse a log file or something or a file that you know the structure of what line you want to change you could do this and then redirect the output to something else uh now you can use the redirect operator to overwrite that file could you yeah what you could do is just redirect it back to file two and it would overwrite the file as it goes i don't want to do that because it'll mess up the rest of my examples but if i did it to file six There we go, file six has changed. And, you know, Bash is good about take that output and redirect it to the file I just read. So if you want to change the file in place, you could redirect it back to itself. But again, I don't want to do that because it might mess up the rest of my examples. All right. The next example is you could replace the first occurrence of a string in each line. Let me copy this one out of my notes. Awk is hard to type. <laughs> so I definitely want to copy and paste this. There's lots of curly braces, parentheses, and commas, and if you don't get them just right, it's all messed up. All right, so we're going to change the word red to the word crimson. This only affects the first instance on each line. You add another comma, and I didn't test this, so sorry if it doesn't work. But remember that global you were doing with your search and replaces? I think this will do... No, it just didn't do anything. So apparently, no, that's not how that works. <laughs> I saw another example that used the G, so I thought it did. All right. You can see, let's see, where's crimson? Here's a crimson. Is there a red that I didn't get? I thought I used red because there were cases where red was there twice. Apparently not. But it does replace the first instance of each one. If there was another red on one of these lines, it wouldn't get it. If someone in the chat knows the global command for replacements in awk, let me know. We can try it out live. <laughs> All right, I have one more example. The reason I'm using this one is because it shows you how incredibly complicated awk gets as you go. This is gonna be replace letters in a string in specifically column two. Remember how I said it works with columns, right? It works with comma or space separated. It defaults to space separated. So you can see that this is what is going on here, <laughs> right? <laughs> There's a bunch of strings in here, which to be honest, some of these I got from examples. I don't actually know what this is doing. Begin FS equals OFS equals quote, quote. Like, what does that actually do? I, I don't know. <laughs> but I can tell you that $2 right here says work with the second item in the array. 
right? Here's that G I was talking about that I thought would work in the other replacement, but doesn't seem to. Maybe I had it in the wrong column. And then, of course, it's telling you which one to replace and which one to print after the replacement happens. That's why that second dollar two is in there. And the print just tells it to print the thing that it worked on. So now what it's going to do is change the letter E in column two to the number zero, because I figured that would stand out nicely. So you can see the E in red did not get changed, but the two E's in green got changed to zeros, and the E in blue did not. Same thing with orange and the other reds here. I could see how this might be useful if you have a specific use case where you know the structure of your data within the text file. All right, so any awk comments that... The, the FS OFS quote, or quote space quote, that's yeah. saying the field separator for your input is equal to the output field separator when it's printing ah, and both okay. space character. So it's basically setting your field separator for input and output as the space character. So I see people saying, is it the same syntax like that? Yep. Oh, cool. Except we picked a, what if, let's see, do I have any that are repeated? Just do. put in red somewhere. Yeah. Let's just add another red to this, to the first line here. There we go. And if I do it with just sub again, we should see that second red doesn't get replaced. Yeah. Substitution versus global. There we go. So simple as that. Now you can see why people don't use awk for substitution, because it seems like it could be super powerful, but we have lots of other tools that seem to work a little better. <laughs> I think it, as you get more complex in what you're trying to search and replace, awk opens up doors for you that would not be open if you were to use something like said, because said is more simplistic in how it operates. So you but, can like limit to certain columns or scope to a certain period or a section of the file, things like that. But I think there's still better tools to do that. Like Perl, for example, could do all of this. And probably Perl's hard to, Perl has this reputation of being hard to read after you've written it. Awk feels like it's in the same boat. Because <laughs> I think Perl really was a replacement for a combination of Sednock. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. 